Miley Cyrus and I have the same birthday. Yeah? Do you guys mm -hmm. uh, hang out? No, we don't, but I love Miley. It's simple. I have a case. It's filled with hundreds of postcards. On the back of each postcard, I've written topics. We pull these cards at random, and then we talk. Do you want to pick the first one? Yes. Okay. All right. Florida. Florida. <laughs> the lovely state of Florida. Okay. The topic on this card is movies. Okay. All right. So tell me, what movies do you find yourself revisiting the most all the time? What movies do you constantly go back to? Well, that's kind of a funny question. I, I, if I've seen a movie um, more than five years ago, yeah, I don't remember it, so I can rewatch with the same sort of. Um, <laughs> So you're like a goldfish. Yeah. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> With about a five year, you know, so I can rewatch movies. In fact, I just rewatched The Graduate, and that's a perfect movie, except by the end I was kind of getting like irritated with Simon and Garfunkel and like the same song Is that possible? being... Nobody gets, <laughs> nobody gets irritated with Simon and Garfunkel. Let's move on to another card here. I'm going to pick this one out. All right. The topic here is pets. So tell me, do you have any furry friends at home? I don't have any furry friends. Um, I have plants because I'm a touring musician, so I don't really want to subject um, you know, a, a pet to such neglect. But I do, um, I do love animals, and um, I, every day I'm sort of like hoping that a stray cat, because we have a lot of like strays in our neighborhood. And this is in Nashville, this Tennessee. This is in Nashville. Yep. Um, in fact, we have this dog, Samson, who like, I think that's his name. I've kind of <laughs> named him, but he kind of like roams around and gets out a lot, but he's really, really cool. He's a chocolate lab. And so we've had actually quite a few animal experiences this week. We have a cat that just kind of hangs out on our front porch. And do you feed it? I don't feed it, but I know someone in the neighborhood is, and so it's kind of like our neighborhood. It's just never pets. going away then. The plants though, I mean, when you go away for weeks at a time, I do, somebody, I do, have somebody, do you have to have a plant sitter? I do have a plant sitter. Um, I do have, I usually have people staying at my house because I like to have somebody there. So it always works out that a, a pal is coming to town and wants to stay, so. Um, and also I have a friend, my friend Patrick uh, waters my plants and grabs the mail and stuff like that, checks in. When you're on tour, do you ever Airbnb out your, your place in Nashville? Because last time I, I was in Nashville, <laughs> we stayed at an Airbnb that was actually one of the musicians from um, the Wild Feathers, Bull Feathers, the, mm -hmm. do you know which band? I, Wild Feathers. Wild Feathers. Yeah, yeah. We mm -hmm. stayed in his, his place and we only figured that out when we got there and we walked around and everything. I was like, wow, he really loves this band. And then we realized that he was in the band. I would never do it professionally uh, because I have so much uh, gear. I have like a home studio there and it's very much uh, my space. And did you record the album in the home studio? Um, yeah, well actually a lot of the overdubbing was done at home and vocals. Um, I started the record at a studio called Alex the Great. Right. Um, I did overdubbing at my house and a lot of work on it there, I would say the majority. And then I did uh, strings and more vocals at a studio in Omaha um, with Mike Mogus at his studio. And then the album was mixed by Stephen Haig, who is an amazing mixer and producer in the UK. So that's kind of the way that traveled. What do you guys listen to in the van? We listen to everything. Um, who gets to who gets to decide? Well, okay, so there's rules and then there's what usually happens. So the rule is if you're driving, you get to dictate what's on the radio. Like you can veto something if you're driving because you're okay. the most important person. You're to the be king or queen. King, yes. And I, I don't drive all that much. Um, Buddy, the guitar player, he is our driver. Our, you know, he's really good at it. Um, it's amazing that he can shred on guitar and then also he's an incredibly safe and good driver. Um, and in the car, he has control over what happens. We listen to a lot of podcasts and we um, also listen to music, but today I was DJing. Yeah. Um, what did we play? Um, I can pull up my Spotify playlist. All right, let's move on to another card here. This card is tattoos. Tattoos. Yeah, how do we feel about tattoos? I have a tattoo. You do? I do. Is it one that we can see? Yeah, you have to see my bra, but I don't know if that's going to offend anybody, but... I, I don't think it's going to offend anybody, but... Okay, well, here we go. Let's Hold do on. it. Oh, there it is. It's my lotus. It's a lotus. 
All right, so that's my tattoo. So we went there. Let's talk about the lotus. Yeah, let's talk mud about the lotus. It's a flower that is mud born, born from the mud, and comes up through the water and blooms beautifully on basically on shit. I think it relates to me in the sense that it, um, that I, you know, I was born in Lansing, Illinois, and my parents were working class people, and um, we didn't have any money growing up, so I'm kind of from the shit. <laughs> and you're from the shit? Yeah, absolutely. Mudborn. Sometimes the best things come from the shit. When did you get it? I got it on a snowy day in 2007. I remember it well because my friend Luke, who's a tattoo artist, right. did the tattoo, and it was right before I moved from Chicago to Nashville, and it was a super, super snowy day. Because I remember that it was snowy because I fell. No, but I actually envisioned that flower before I got the tattoo and I didn't know what it was. And then I went searching for the symbol. You know how we search for answers to our preconceived notions? You, you Googled your preconceived notions? This was pre-Google. Oh, this is pre-Google. What year oh, was this yeah. again? What 2007. I mean, Google might have existed, <laughs> yeah, but, it, but we, we did have Google, but it wasn't like it is now where you ha right. everyone's got a phone and it wasn't a situation where everyone was searching things on Google. I mean, I, it might have been one of the search engines at right. that point. I mean, this is the heyday of MySpace. I mean... Did you ever have a Friendster account? Oh, no. But I think I had MySpace instead. It was like yeah. right around that time. Yeah, 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 I had MySpace. Are you on social media? Do you do I am on social Facebook media. Facebook and oh, I love the it. Twitter and the Instagram? Yes, I do because I travel a lot and so I get to keep up with my people okay. and uh, I get to be social. Hi, Mike. <laughs> it's, the light is very blinding, so I could only kind of see you. This is Mike Harris. So he, that's okay. He, yeah, you get it. Come on in. Come on in. Yeah. <laughs> We're live right now? No. We're live right now. But you guys want to get in on this next card? You get to get low, though. You might, have, right to, you might have to kind of get down at a different level. Take a knee. Yeah, yeah take, take a, a knee. Take a knee, guys. Yeah. All right. Uh, Mike, pick a card. <laughs> <laughs> I promise this isn't painful. What do we get? Texas? Tejas. Tejas. Uh-oh. This is going to get dark. That's okay. Because the topic is death. We can handle it. Yeah. How often do you think about death? Do you think about death? Yeah. A lot? <laughs> uh -oh. I mean, Mike, enough. Mike's about to get dark here. Enough. What does that mean? What is it? What's the context of it? I'll, I'll say this. I, I love riding motorcycles. Jesus. And once I got into riding motorcycles, like about three or four months in, I was like, man, I could die at any moment. So... Yeah, it, it was like I had to like come to peace with it or quit, and I came to peace with it. Like so, if I die on a bike, I die doing something I loved. You go out like Jax Teller. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, me and Jax <laughs> and uh, Tig and uh, Clay. What kind of bike do you ride? A uh, '79 Harley. A '79 Harley? Yeah, chopper. '79. Do you have to kickstart that? Uh, it actually does not have a kickstart. It's kind of unusual in that way. I am usually depressed on my birthdays, and it's uh, it's about growing older. It's about fearing death, and I I think I write songs about death. Yeah. Once again, I'm talking about context for your life, you know, and how short it is, and what's important, and what ambition means, and what love means, and what family means, and all of these things, what they mean. If you really are thinking on it about how you're spending your life and, and death and all of those things. I'm very depressed on my birthday. I think a lot of people feel that way. They just don't talk about it. But I, agree. I don't. I don't feel. Uh, I don't ever want to really celebrate on my birthday per se. I want to celebrate like every day. And is the worst part that everybody else wants to celebrate your birthday on your birthday? I just keep it on the DL. You just stay home. <laughs> yeah. What's your yeah. birthday? Yeah, November 23rd. November 23rd. All right, so that's coming up. You're. Like it a is. couple days before Thanksgiving. Yes, and Miley Cyrus and I have the same birthday. Yeah? Do you guys mm -hmm. uh, hang out? No, we don't, but I love Miley. I like I Miley. I want to hang out with you, Miley. Can I just go <laughs> ahead and get this on the record? Yeah. I think Miley Cyrus is an incredible talent. I love her. She's an incredible talent. Totally. Her voice is so good. So and good. When, have you ever seen on, on YouTube uh, when she sings Jolene? No. Holy shit. Whenever you have a chance, get your phone. I will, right and look after up this. Miley I'm Cyrus look up. singing Jolene. She crushes it. And my theory is this, is that she's doing this whole kind of wild child thing now until it stops being cute. Of course. And then as soon as it's done, she's going to take some time off, reinvent herself to the person who I think she actually really is, which is that voice. And then she's going to have a second career. Everyone's going to say, oh, wow, look what happened to Miley. I mean, I think 
she's doing exactly what a 20, early 20s gal oh, should yes. be doing. And I think she's doing it musically. I think she's exploring and I'm, I don't know, I think she's great. I do too, I think she's so much fun and I don't think she has to apologize for anything. Oh, she does not care.